Hi everyone, welcome to Agina Craft. In this video we're gonna do something completely different, as always. I'm gonna talk about the things I wish I knew when I started my epoxy resin journey. I will try to give you some ideas how to save money, how to save time and how to save, uh, save, how to save a lot of energy when you start out your epoxy adventure. Because let me tell you, there are so many ways you can go wrong, there are so many ways you can waste money, waste time and waste energy. And for me, saving money while enjoying crafting is, is one of the most important things because I just can't shovel money into uh, into a hobby uh, <laughs> anymore. Uh, I used to collect Warhammer, so yeah, let's just... Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to what I was talking about. Um, so basically, I made a short video, I think last month, where I asked you guys... What are the major things you wish you knew when you started out your crafting journey or crafting adventure? I will link it down in the description so you can check out the other uh, maker's comments in our community and there are other maker's uh, advices for you. So after this video, go and check that one out. Now, uh, I'm not going to do a numbered list because I have no idea how many I can squeeze into this video, but one of the most important things I learned is that I don't have to buy all the molds, all the pigments, all the different kind of tools and accessories in these bundle packages uh, uh, on, on Amazon and stuff. You don't need all that. Okay, you can go to your dollar store, you can purchase uh, mixing cups, you can purchase uh, silicone spatulas, you can purchase basically all the things you need to start a, a, a little crafting setup. So instead of buying it for like hundreds of dollars from, uh, from these Amazon online stores or from these uh, YouTubers, you can actually just buy it in a dollar store. As a starter kit, you know, uh, or not as a starter kit, but household items, general household items, okay? So, always, always, always look out for for cheaper alternatives for molds and uh, for pigments and uh, for for the basic stuff like spatulas um, and, and all that stuff, okay? So, that was, that was the, the main thing uh, I took away. Uh, when I started my epoxy journey, I literally spent almost a thousand dollars buying the entire base kit of mixers or spatulas or pipettes, uh, literally uh, like measuring cups and all that jazz. And now, nowadays, I'm just using the party cup, you know, the red party cup you can buy in the US. We have the we have a similar version here. I buy a hundred pack. And I use that. The other thing I learned, and uh, it was when I was doing woodworking, uh, not when I was doing resin works uh, strictly, is always wear proper protection, wear protective equipment. Let's say you do resin, and uh, you have a skin, you have a sensitive skin. Okay, you can develop eczema and you can develop chemical burrs on your skin immediately touching resin okay don't risk it don't be like me use proper ppe uh, the other thing i learned is when i'm using power tools high speed power tools always protect my eyes always wear a mask if i can or or wear gloves if i can but most importantly imagine in my head the set of moves I'm going to do with the tool just just play it out you know what I'm gonna do where I'm gonna touch where is my hand gonna be where are the wires where I'm gonna move it how is the how is the piece uh, uh, what you call it uh, head down is it solid uh, can I go around it do I have enough space you know and sometimes I notice that oops this wire is in the way oops I don't have enough cord length Oh my God, if I touch it like this, this will fly off the thing. And yeah, like plan out every move when you are using high speed power tool. This, that's, that was one of the main things I learned. Uh, now, the other main thing I learned is when I, when I stay in wood, 
and don't have to buy the expensive wood stains I can uh, use uh, leather dyes I can use uh, fabric dyes I can use different kind of dyes different kind of pigments to stain wood and I don't have to buy the little tin for 60 bucks to stain wood I can actually purchase like cheaper and and most commonly used pigments uh, i also have a video on what are pigments dyes and inks and what is the difference between them so go check that one out after this video um one more thing i wish i knew when i started out my epoxy resin journey is that inks whatever is labeled ink is such a composite uh color it's it's not just a carrier material and pigment it's such a chemical compound when it is exposed to heat it falls apart to its break, uh, to its uh, building blocks so it literally disappears the other thing i wish i knew when i started my journey is that food dye is heat sensitive what i mean by that is when i apply food dye as a colorant on on my any any kind of woodworking or epoxy or anything it's it fades in about an hour if it's exposed to sunlight i don't know why uh, I, i'm not a chemist but if it's if it's exposed to like uh, i don't know 120 degrees fahrenheit for about 45 degrees celsius it literally just vanishes okay so whenever you use dyes make sure you don't use food dyes in a place where it can be exposed to heat because it will just whoosh vanish and disappear uh, one more thing I, I wish I knew when I started on my epoxy resin journey is that the spruce wood the timber you can buy in uh, in your hardware store you know in the big chains uh, uh, I just wanted to say the American one and I have no idea how it's called uh, I'm pulling a blank on it you know the uh, Home Depot yeah that's the one that's the one you guys have and uh, the other one B&Q in the UK and whatever whatever part of the chain you have like Bauhaus in Germany or don't ask me how I know. Uh, but anyway, the, you buy this spruce wood, and the problem with this wood is that it, it still contains a bunch of resin. So it's dry, okay? It doesn't contain water, but when you use it, and when you leave it out in the sun, or just leave it out in the open air, the resin from the wood will come out or escape or whatever however you say it but it will warp the wood um i have built a table using spruce and every board just started warping in some weird way and the the resin was flowing under the like the wood resin was flowing under the epoxy was lifting the epoxy up it was a nightmare so I would say using spruce leave it out on the Sun or leave it out on the open air before you use it for about six months at least so that all the resin from the wood can just evaporate and uh, and then because these are very fast grown woods and uh, they're not treated very well uh, they are dehydrated of course but they are they are not they are not left there long enough to to have the sap just get out of the tree anyway so i had issues with that so i would be very cautious to use spruce in the future without actually leaving it out in the sun and let it let let nature do its thing and and let the resin flow out of it or or something like that so yeah that is that is another thing i wish i knew when i started out um also the the v one more thing i talked about uh in my rent video is that you can use any kind of trays and a as hdpe molds and uh, i would like to 
extend that statement uh, to that if you're using like baking trays or if you're using cat litter trays or or uh, flo florist trays which are actually HDP plastic trays make sure that the bottom of the tray is glued down to an MDF sheet or something rigid so that it can't so the problem okay so my problem when i encounter that when i use a uh, a flower tray as a mold for a for a tray or something the center of it tends to curve up because of the heat of the resin when it cures it just morphs the tray a little bit and it takes a lot of time to sand it flat and uh, to avoid that I got an advice from one of you makers who watch the channel is that I should use some glue and glue it to a flat surface so it doesn't pop up and that actually works so that is the thing I wish I knew before I started my epoxy resin journey because I had ruined so many molds and I created myself so much extra work because when it, when it curves up in the bottom you actually have to like sand it flat and man oh man that is like a whole different can of worms i had to deal with and this is the moment where i would like to thank for the sponsors of this video you guys you sponsor this channel by supporting me on buymeacoffee.com where you can uh, throw some change at my face five bucks or more uh and with that support you can actually actively help me out to keep this channel alive or buying something from my web shop at aginacraft.com. You find both of these links down in the video description. And I would like to thank you for supporting me. Thank you for helping me out. I am eternally grateful for everything you've done for me and all of your support. Uh, so if I saved you some money or if I help you in any way, please consider supporting the channel please consider helping me out to keep this to keep this thing going um yeah so i would like to thank you guys my sponsors to helping me even even in the hardest time sometimes um thank you very much for watching i really hope you got something out of this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye